the art bag community worldwide this is one of a kind we're actually putting a root cellar or a cool pantry you can call it in the ground and then you'll be two layers two stories more above ground we are expecting at least 15 to 20 degrees cooler down there right. and um, certain crops will be preserved at around 70 degrees to 80 degrees fahrenheit and that's what we're hoping to achieve there What we did is uh, we hired an excavator that came in and uh, trenched out um, a hole about 32 feet in diameter and 9 feet deep. Um, so we can achieve like a loft of a cellar of at least 8 feet um, in, in a head, headroom. And you can see the different layers that we're using. The back layer is the best, which is our rocky um, clay material. Then the mid layer is more clay, which we're going to use for the walls that are above the ground. And then we have a final layer, it's just topsoil organic layer, which is not it's not going to be used at all for the bags. Um, it's going to be used around the building to slope the walls, the water away from the building. The um, purpose of the Hole is to create a multi-storied um, building. It's a cylindrical tower, and it's going to be a kind of like a root cellar with um, different compartments that are insulated inside of the root cellar to give us more uh, cooling capacity, trying to reduce the temperature, the, the ambient temperature. So right now what we're doing is uh, we're supplying the, the earth, the good material and we're putting it down at the bottom to make a ratio of a stabilized ratio mix of 10% lime and we're putting the lime both in the bags in the lower courses and also we're putting in the stabilized we're putting the stabilized mix between the the wall and this tarp right here. If you zoom in, you'll see we're compacting the mix between the tarp that's covering the bags and the earth in the hole. And the purpose for that is to give us additional water barrier capacity. We're using the tarp as a water barrier so that the water doesn't seep in to the building. Um, usually the concept is to use um, 6 mil poly but we're using this tarp because it's a bit more resistant to the, to the stones and the gravels that will be hitting it. Um, it's a little bit more heavy duty and it's also water resistant and it's made of the same material as the bags polypropylene so it should last as long as, as the bags. We have our compass set up. The compass gives us a level and our radius gives us an even circle. We got our level. Give us a level so that make sure each course is going level. We'd loose this and adjust it an inch every time so we can adjust it outward. As you see, the bag is being stepped off a little bit against the wall and. The purpose for that is so that it counter acts the, the force of the earth okay. trying to push into it. But it's pretty much its own, um, its own butt resting because it's in a round shape. So we start with a. When we start with barbed wire. These four inch cinder blocks, I'd buy like 50 of these and they work much better than these rocks because these rocks are very uneven in the, the bob wire piece. So I'll use these cinder blocks, a couple of these all along and then I actually will use these when I'm doing the windows and the doors. I'll use these cinder blocks, sticking them with mortar to give me a nice edge. It's uh, something I'll test out this time around. So the barbed wire it always poses a problem, but the way I do it, so 
I just roll it right on the, right on the bottom. So it goes faster with, with uh, love of course. So you just go pushing it, pushing it. And he unwinds himself quite easily. Whenever it's snug, just give it a tug and it will So if you keep uh, somebody comes behind and they put the, the rocks in it. I'm gonna stump just one bag. Uh, usually I stump a, a row of bags or a course of bags. Or minimum there should be at least five bags. I usually have two persons doing this. Just trying to get it done for demonstration purposes. So I'll cut this off later. Two buckets uh, comes out of one bag of lime, and if we want that to be 10%, then we just it will equal the 20 buckets. 20 buckets. It gives us oh. earth to two buckets of lime. This gives us 10%. 10%. You could bring it down to 5% and or even lower to 2.5%. But we're using a pretty um, strong stabilizing mix, 10%. We prefer using it over uh, Portland cement because this will actually be a, a better water repellent, um, water protection than a concrete that will actually wick water. Mechanically stabilizer, there's two layers. There's one ring outside. There's a ring inside that the bags are sitting on. Uh, below that, it's a, it's a rubble trench, which is about, about the 16 inches that the machine dug out. And the stones that we got, these stones here, we put them in the rubber trench and then we put the tires just as an added mechanical stabilizer. Um, our floor level is going to go all the way up to here. We're going to put a plastic, 6 mil plastic for a water barrier on the floor first. And then we're going to put the, the so a stabilized earth, rammed earth, similar to what we're doing right now, and ram it to about here. Yeah, so this is our floor level. From here, we're hoping to get a ceiling of about 8 feet. My grandmother lived to the day she died with an earthen floor and every time I visited her, the more she swept it, the more beautiful that earth looked, the more nice, you know, that sheen and everything. Right now this is only the foundation base and then we're going to do the final little um, lime base and the more you, you wear it, the more character it gets. So we got these right now, we're, we're double bagging these used feed bags. You can see they're double bags. There's a system that you do with working with tubes. I haven't had the opportunity to work with tubes yet because you can't find them. You have to, you have to order them from Guatemala. It, it incurs a little more cost to ship. So I just buy these used bags at 25 cents. Uh, that's like 12.50 US. These are chicken feed shoots. Uh, you buy them at the farmer's store and they have the, the little thing at the bottom and the feed goes in here. And so these are the, these are old ones, you use them. And I cut them and bend them so that I have a grabbing so I can lift it. And these work nicer than bucket shoots, I really like them. I saw them and somebody used it before and they work out really, really well. So a double bag, I'll work. I'd be working on the wall, and the first step would be to put in the, the ears. Putting in the ears, you end up with a nice square bag. If you don't put in the ears, you end up with loose bags, and it becomes a problem when you plaster. The next step would be to fold your bag partially. You ready for your first bag? You want to start when you're far starting your first course about halfway, so you create that running bond. You see, the, the bond is almost 
it's not put together. You always want to design so you, you have a running bond. So normally we won't be using such a big bucket. But, and we would have moist, moisturized this. So we really would have moisturized it. I'm just going to show the bike frame closer. And I have the drawers in here. And then pack it down. And keep it squared. I'm sure there's no wrinkles in the bag. Get the wrinkles out. The less wrinkles, the more you can put in the bag. So we leave a little amount of sock to be able to fold it. Packing it down a bit so you can get a fat bag. If you want a skinnier bag, you can tie it looser. And that will do also. Get my nails. And then fold it. The fastest way I've found to do this is folding like, a, like an envelope. So if I'm going to flip it that way, I want the, um, the flap to stay upwards. Stand on the side that you're going to drop the bag. If I'm standing on this side, the bag will drop this side. So it means I'll flip this one first. Fold it. So this flap stays facing upwards when I drop it vertically. I use these kind of like orange juice jugs or milk jugs. Are very convenient. I just turn them off and stays with the handles. Very convenient for nails. Keep one right there. I'm gonna refold this. Sounds good. My nail. Strike it through as much layers as I can. Meet up again. Takes a little practice. That's how it should hold. So now I'm gonna drop it. This is a this is a hundred pound bag and it weighs I think about 120 pounds. Do it by yourself and line it up pretty good is a, a little trick to it. So this is my first bag and see I'd have to lean it up against another bag. Put it in these shins to, to work it. It's much easier with a 50 pound bag. And I want this, that's fine there, but let's say I have to buck it up with another one. I pick it up and just drop it. Then I'll start forming it to a square. I'm not using any slider, I'm working right on the um, right on the barbed wire. And when you get a little knack of it, it moves much, much farther, much faster than if you have the slider. Set it right where I'm gonna drop this bag. And looking, I'm seeing that I'm right doing my running bond. Get this, drop these ears in. Make sure the wrinkles are off. Start packing it down a bit so you can get a fat bag. Get my nails. I'm gonna grab it here. Thank you. Push it my shin. Make sure we get a good lock. Check my nail over there. Start shaping it up. And um, I'm not stepping this one out because uh, I'm moving too quickly. The stepping out is moving too quickly, so I'm just gonna use it flush this level. Uh, the other one I'll move it a little more out. Using my cinder block. Shake this up. So here we go. The pond. This is what I really like about this pumper. It's so easy to do, and there's no uh, there's no kickback. Uh, we got a special thing uh, made. This is the best um, rummer I've seen. I've tried the one sold in the hardware store, but we made this one with a piece of channel iron, and it really works because the square one. When you hit the bags, the square one seems to bounce and it hurts your wrists. This one you can actually uh, control it. We got a little handy box here we made out of a hardwood 2x4. And we just put it in. Stir it up. I'm just going to do this edge just to get it ready for the other bag. Uh, I don't need to really bat this one because it's be against the, 
the dirt. So this one doesn't really play a role, but when you're building above ground, you want to back both sides to minimize the amount of clustering. Um, now this is a, one of the last pro well, a process we have to do. It's really tough to get the dirt in here. It's stabilized with lime, the same, the same mix that's in here. And we gotta like rum it. And this is gonna give us added protection for the kind of like the water barrier. And this is compacted yesterday and this is fresh. So this is a fresh one. You can see how it's easy to compact. Yeah, this was yesterday. So well compiled, it's already stabilizing. So when it's compacted and it starts hardening, you don't need to come back again. You wanna, you wanna come back, you wanna compact um, at about six inches layers. You don't wanna be too deep in um, uncompacted dirt. You know, you get a better compaction at six inches layers at a time. Let me um, tell you guys how to not throw out your back or hurt yourself for the ones that will be with us. You just try to use a loose soil and just don't dig into the, the shovels deep. But if it just takes a little bit of inch, that's all. It just takes an inch at a time. Don't try to. I see a lot of people trying to force the shovel in. It's not going to happen. Even with us, so what we do is trying to move the jerk the, the shovel so that some dirt would fall and fill the bucket. We'll do it bucket by bucket. 20 buckets is a ratio to one bag of lime. That gives us 10% stabilizing it we're gonna we have to stabilize the low ground when we get above ground it's just gonna moisturize the soil and put it straight into the bag so we're at right now on the difficult stage of the, the hardest part of the, the construction yeah it's a lot of work but it's uh plan to stay there for a very 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 long time <laughs>